Hello YouTubers and welcome to JK Lenses review of the Nikon 200-400 f4 zoom lens. This is the largest of Nikon's constant f-stop zoom lenses and it maintains a constant f4 aperture across this large 200-400mm focal length range. It also maintains a constant size while focusing and a constant size while zooming. It also maintains similar quality to the prime lenses that Nikon make in this focal length range which as a package makes it quite an incredible lens. However, all zoom lenses are a compromise and the payback for these features is in terms of size, weight and cost. It's very big, it's very heavy and it's very expensive. If you don't need prime lens quality, if you don't need the constant f4 aperture, there are other lenses from other manufacturers uh, with the Nikon mount which will do the same job for you at a much smaller size and a much lower price. There are basically two autofocus versions of the 200-400 f4 by Nikon. The original VR1 version was introduced in 2003 and ran through to 2010 where it was replaced by the VR2 version. The VR1 version has the red VR logo, the VR2 the gold VR logo and also has nano crystal coating. The version which we look at in this review is a second hand VR1 version. The specification plate tells you part of the story behind this highly specified lens. It's an AFS lens using Nikon's silent wave motors to focus the lens rather than a screwdriver blade attachment from the camera body. This is hardly surprising at 24 elements in 17 groups. This must be one of Nikon's most complicated lenses. It's hard to see how any camera body could focus it mechanically. It also has, as it says on the specification plate, a G, which means it has no aperture ring. The aperture is set electronically by the camera, which means some of the earlier Nikon camera bodies won't work with this lens. Four of the elements are made of ED glass, Nikon's extra low dispersion glass, as it shows you on the spec plate. The lens also has Nikon's VR or vibration reduction. The version featured in this video is a VR1 model, uh, which Nikon claim allows you to shoot at three stops slower than normal hand holding speeds. There is now a VR2 version, which Nikon claim allow you to shoot at four stops beyond normal hand holding speeds. The lens focuses internally and also zooms internally. Neither action causes any change in the length of the lens. If we start our tour of the lens's features at the back, there are two things that are immediately obvious. Firstly, the lack of an aperture ring, which we mentioned before. And secondly, the rubber ring at the back of the lens, which provides a seal between the lens and the camera body. When used with a professional standard Nikon body, this ring provides an effective weather seal between the camera and the lens, and I've certainly used this lens in fairly heavy drizzle without any ill effects. If you're used to fixing filters to the front of your lenses, then the next feature on the lens is a bit of a surprise, it's a little drawer into which filters are placed. The drawer is opened by pressing down and turning the little knob, and the filter size is 52mm. In normal use, a neutral colour filter is placed in this little slot, and in fact the lens won't work properly if no filter is present at all. If you're buying second hand, it's worth just checking that there is actually a 52mm filter in there. Although this feature has the advantage that it means the lens only takes the relatively inexpensive 52mm filters, rather than the enormous saucer-sized pieces of glass that would be needed to fit on the front, it does have one disadvantage. Probably the only type of filter which I still use regularly now that all photography is digital rather than film is a polarising filter and of course a polarising filter needs to be turned to get the correct polarisation for your particular scene and this is very awkward if you've got to take it out the drawer and turn it and then put it back in. Moving along the lens the next feature is the large tripod collar. As you can see loosening the bolt head allows you to rotate the lens and its camera body through a full 360 degrees. This is a very sturdy feature of the lens and as you rotate the lens there's no wobbling whatsoever and the lens and the camera body remain perfectly balanced within the collar. The bolt head which loosens the tripod collar has a nice progressive friction feel to it. You can either loosen it completely so that the whole thing moves around very freely or there's a nice sort of halfway position where as you turn the camera and the body within the collar they will stop and remain wherever you leave them. Attached to the tripod collar is the lens foot, which is used to attach the lens to a tripod. Although if, as shown in this picture, you want to attach it to a large lens mount, such as this one from Manfrotto, then a large lens plate will need to be attached as well. 
Although there's been some discussion on the web as to whether this lens foot is large enough, I've certainly had no problems with it, and it's always managed to keep the lens sufficiently stable for my purposes. In front of the tripod collar there are three large rubberized rings. The first of these is the zoom ring, which carries you from the 200 to 400 mm focal length. This is large and falls easily to hand and is excellent to use. In front of this, the flared ring is the focus ring, allowing you, if the lens is set up in this way, to override the autofocus simply by holding it and turning it. What appears to be a third ring near the front of the lens is in fact simply a grip and doesn't turn and doesn't affect the lens in any way when you hold it. As you can see, the front element of this lens is very large, and if you were worrying about having to buy a 124mm neutral colour filter, the good news is that Nikon already provide one. The lens comes supplied with a clear glass plate which screws on the front of the lens, obviously to protect it. This front element can be removed should you want to reduce the amount of glass involved in the lens, but obviously it's a good idea to keep it there all the time to protect your valuable lens. There's no screw thread on the front of this front element, all filters have to go in the little pocket at the rear of the lens. In common with all Nikon's very large telephoto lenses, it comes supplied with a large barrel shaped carbon fibre hood. This can be screwed onto the lens in either position, facing forward for operation or facing backwards for storage. As you might imagine, this item is well made and does the job that it's designed for extremely well. It's strong but light and is very quick to put on or to take off. The slightly surprising omission at the front of the lens is a lens cap. The lens doesn't come supplied with a lens cap, nor do Nikon make one to fit it. It is possible to buy a lens cap from other manufacturers, and there'll be more to say about this in a later section. In order to protect the front of the lens, it does come supplied with a drawstring nylon bag, about the same length as the lens hood, which fits over the front of the lens. The lens being reviewed here was purchased second-hand and didn't come with its nylon bag. I'll explain how I get round this problem in a later section. This lens actually has a total of 11 buttons and switches, about the same as a small car which is why they deserve their own section. The main panel of four switches is situated just in front of the tripod collar and next to the specification plate. Working from the top, the first of these switches basically selects between autofocus and manual focus. When in the left hand position, M stroke A, the lens will autofocus, although if you hold the focus ring and turn it, you can override it manually. In the right hand position, it's just manual focus and you have to turn the focus ring in order to focus the lens. In use, I find it very handy to have this switch at the top. It's easy to find and to operate without taking your eye away from the viewfinder. The second switch down controls the focusing range. When switched to the left, the lens will focus anywhere from its closest focusing distance of 2 meters up to infinity. On the right-hand selection, it'll only focus down to 6 meters. In use, this switch actually has quite a big effect on the autofocus performance of the lens, as we'll see in the next section on performance. The bottom two buttons control the vibration reduction system. The upper button of the two turns the system on or off, and the lower one switches between normal VR, which you would use to reduce the vibration from normal hand holding, to active VR, which you would use when you're on a moving object, such as a car or a boat. Just behind the tripod collar there is another bank of switches containing two further switches. The upper of these two switches is a three position switch which doesn't actually do anything on its own. Instead, it sets the operation of the focus buttons, which are situated around the front of the lens. When this switch is set to the left, pressing one of the four focus buttons at the front of the lens will lock the autofocus on a particular setting. When this switch is set to the middle position, the memory recall position, pressing one of the focus buttons at the front of the lens will immediately take the focus of the lens to the position which you've set in the memory. Putting a focus position into the memory of the lens is done using the memory set button near the back of the lens just underneath the filter holder. And if you set this switch to the right hand position, then pressing one of the focus buttons at the front of the lens will simply turn the autofocus system on. The bottom of these two switches can be used to defeat the various beeps which the autofocus system may make. This lens comes with a number of accessories included with it. The first of these is the large barrel shaped lens hood and there's also obviously a plastic rear cap to cover the rear mount of the lens. The lens is also supplied with a nylon drawstring bag about the same length as the lens hood which fits over the end of the lens uh, to protect it. The example being reviewed here was bought second hand and didn't have its nylon bag with it. It's not actually possible to buy the nylon bag separately from Nikon UK and so the lens is managing very well at the moment with a Chicago Bears beanie hat.